want you to imagine a boy who lived in a world very much like our own. Going through his life, he grew tired of all of the world's imperfections, and it got to the point where he wanted to change that world. So he decided to create a world of his own. He created the idea from his world, taking most of his life experience and life force, making it to the very detail of everything that he could possibly imagine. And one day, a power erupted inside of this young boy, and the boy began to change everything about his world. This boy recreated the world, making the sky red, the buildings of the future, and even creatures that you couldn't even begin to imagine. And now that boy has found peace in his world of his dreams. And that brings me to the topic of today's video on how to create the world of your dreams, world building and you. So hey there guys, it's your boy Vandal and I'm back with another video and now I'm going to take a break from the process of us, you know, making manga and that whole process and I'm going to go into the foundation of one of the core elements of storytelling and if you've seen the intro to this video and the thumbnail, you know that it's world building. So quickly, let's define what world building is. World building is the process of developing a detailed and plausible fictional world for a novel or story. So simply, you basically get to play God and craft a world that is different from the one that you currently live in and creating a world that basically fits the story that you want to tell. With that definition in mind, I want to get into some tips about what we can do as manga writers, comic book artists to get better at crafting a better world. Now I think it's really important to start here and the one thing that I find many manga, comic creators, whatever you want to call yourself, is that you spend too much time world building. And I know we want to spend our time world building because it's important to us, but we need to level it out. So. I know you're watching this video right now and this is you, the person who figures out how the toilets are created by some blacksmith and affect the world of poop. Okay, maybe I went a little bit overboard there, but you understand what I mean. So clearly you are the person who enjoys getting the finer details out of their world and that's great. This is admirable, but the problem with looking at these finer details like all artists at any stage of your process is that we can get lost in them and we aren't creating and thus we become stuck. The goal of this whole creative process is to create because as much time as you will spend world building, you will never get your world to be as perfect as you want it to be. Let's just start there. At this point, you'll say, Vandal, I have so many ideas. How can you limit me? How can you limit my imagination? Now, now hold up. I don't want to limit you. I just want to streamline the process and I'm going to give you some options on how you can officially work through your world building without getting stuck in this part of the process that most people do for their creative lives. So you have all of these ideas and I would recommend splitting them up into two categories and that is the macro and the micro ideas of world building. So basically take your ideas and see what fits into what part. So let's start with the macro. The macro are the big parts of your world building. I would say these are the parts of your world building that are very important to your story and your story cannot deal without. An example of a macro world building is possibly the creation of mountains due to warring clans. They were both wiped out, leaving the sword at the top of the mountain that our main character needs to get for yada yada yada. You know where the rest of your story goes. There are many more examples of macro ideas, but just keep it simple and let it be the important part of your story when you decide to use it. So that's one of the things I want you guys to think about in the macro. It's the important part of your story. Now conversely Firstly, the micro would be extra parts of your world building, but they aren't as important to your story. This might be, for example, how or why flowers are grown in a certain region or how the molecular biology of reptile people in your story are and maybe every other organism are breaking down to those finer details. Now, if it's important to your story and it needs it, use it. But if it's not some of those finer details, you don't need to go into so much detail. It'll help streamline the process because what we want to do is get to building our world and not get stuck in the details. Remember that. 
So now that we've had the person who has the many ideas, there's also people who are just starting their journey and they might not have as many ideas. And one of the recommendations I have is that you build as you create your story. Now, this is basically just taking what works in your story, mainly those macro elements that we discussed earlier and just making your story with those ideas. As you go along in the creation of other world building elements, you can create more as necessary. Now, I'd like to talk about being careful since if you haven't thought these things out thoroughly, you can make mistakes in the continuity of your world and how things work. So one warning I want to give to people is to be careful in what you have stated in your world. And the best way to do this is to make some notes so that you can refer back to those notes so that you don't contradict how your world works or things that you may or may not have have stated that have happened in your story. So one thing that I like to do if I'm not super planned out about the world is to create these things called threads. I don't know if there's an official term to them, but threads basically mean they're a visually open ended objects that you put inside of your world that can be expanded upon later. So, for instance, I'll use artwork in a scene that might depict uh, a major battle between two animals. And this might be something that I can use in another chapter of my story and build on that. I know that you can use murals, monuments, different types of objects. And the beauty about threads is that there are many ways to use them. And they're a nice tool if you have a flash of an idea that you want to save for later and build upon that on your world and sometimes it might not be that important to your story now and if you don't ever use it later that is also fine but at least you have something there that you can expand upon later i hope that made sense if you know the actual term of what i'm trying to describe here called threads at least how i'm coining it put it in the comment section down below we're all learning here i'm learning you're learning so let's learn together so thanks okay y'all it's time I know I always talk about this and I beat this dead horse, but I'm going to say it again and I'll say it in every one of my videos always. But I got to say, well, you know what I'm about to say, right? You don't know. You don't know what I'm about to say. Characters, the characters. Now, I know that this is a world building video and we're talking about world building. However, the reason people always want to get to know about your world and see what it's about is because of the characters. I go into how you can create awesome characters in a video about how to start your manga, which you can check out right here. There's way more info on that about character creation, which I think you should definitely check out and start there. But that brings me to another part of the world building process is, and that is don't bloat it with unnecessary exposition, especially in the beginning of your story. Don't just tell people about your world, especially since we're in manga, I'll get to that a little bit later, but show it to the reader as the story progresses and you build that world. World building. Okay, I think you get it. It's off-putting and boring to read pages of your world that I'm not interested in just yet in exploring. So perhaps maybe just a brief mention at the beginning, but always start with the characters. Always the characters should come first. Also in the idea of bloat is that the exposition you are filling in with those very fine details isn't really important to the story. So try avoid doing that. If you're going to talk or say something about the story or about your world, make it the most interesting thing that can at least hook the reader right in before we get into who or what the story is about. Another idea, if you're one of those people who wants to avoid bloat, think about pacing and slowly introducing those ideas into your story don't just hit everybody at once too much information is a sensory overload and thus leads to people not being as interested in the world don't keep the reader waiting no one likes filler 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 Okay, so I really went into the things that you want to avoid during your world building process, but a way to really avoid all of those pitfalls is to really understand your story. So know what will happen from the beginning of your story by outlining what's going to happen, seeing how all of that's going to flow, whether it's a long form series or it's a one shot. Having that outline will help you flow and add all of the elements of how your world will act and function during the time of your storytelling. It's a small detail that can be overlooked, but what you want to do is know where your story takes place and how that functions for that world. I'll get into how you can expand your world, but do keep in mind what type of world you're trying to create for your story. 
Now, with understanding your story and yourself, to be truly consistent, you need to understand your audience and who you're writing this for. Because, for example, if you have a world placed in high fantasy, you might have something that's a bit more detailed and imagined than a story that takes place in modern day. That's why knowing your story and your setting can really impact how detailed you want to be to your readers and how they're going to take in the story that you're trying to create and the world that you're trying to build. You want your audience to be drawn into your world and you want them to see more of it regardless of where it takes place. You want them to know more so putting in the thought is also super important. You want to work smarter, not harder in this case, and that's why you're here. All right, so now you might still have gotten to this point in the video and you're like, Vandal, I'm a world build till I die. All right, so boom. We need to do the simplest thing with all of these ideas in our notes, and that's to organize them. You probably have so many notes that you've kept over the years, but really organizing them can help. The macro and micro was one way to organize the ideas about your world. There are also many websites where you can condense these ideas, and I'll drop two sites which I think are good, and they don't sponsor me yet. Please sponsor me. The first is Scrivener, which is basically for those who are heavy on the writing side, but allows you to properly sort out all of your ideas. However, it is a paid type thing. You get a 30 day free trial, so check it out. I'm not sponsored. Please sponsor me. All right. So the next one I think is also a little bit cool because it's a little bit on the more visual side, and that is notebook.ai. Uh, it might be a bit better for a manga artist because like I said, it's a bit more visual. It'll help you visualize better what in the world you are actually building. It's cool. It's for free. It's a little bit limited. So you'd have to pick what stories you actually want to build. However, know that the one thing I didn't mention, the best tool of all, the number one, it's not on the internet. And that's good old soda chisel, y'all. <laughs> No, you get to organize in your cave and the world isn't your oyster. Ah! Uh, okay. Sorry, my caveman brain kicked in. But the better you organized you are, the better you can add back and refer to later to those world ideas that you want to really use that maybe you didn't get a chance to or expand upon later. It just keeps everything in a nice place where you can refer back to later. You can honestly use anything, paper and pencil, as long as your ideas are organized and you can refer back to them later. It's the best part of world building because you'll never be lost in whatever you're trying to create later in your story or during your story. So another part to creating better organization throughout your world building and optimizing the use of these sites that I just gave you is using templates and you can get templates anywhere. But I decided why look anywhere else but here in the link down below. If you click it, you can get a template that I created for 101 questions that can help you world build and ask you questions about your world. I really tried to keep it to the macro elements. There are some micro bits that can help you out with the small things that you might want to add. But the more that you know about the world, the faster you can get to really putting it all together in those recommended sites that I just talked about. So yeah, don't forget, check the link in the description. Uh, there's a free template. You can use it with Microsoft Word, edit it however you want, add more questions. It's all up to you. It's just a starting place for anyone who needs that help. So I really hope that you enjoy it and helps you with all those questions that you might have not thought of at the beginning of creating your world and spur maybe even some more story elements that you didn't even think about adding to your current story. It'll be more exciting with you being able to explore more possibilities. And speaking of possibilities, the one thing I see in a lot of created worlds are a lot of parallels to the world that we live in. So I mean, world building is creating a world that you want to be in, and thus it cannot be so removed from your own world. And that makes sense. So you want to know how to be creative with your world. And it really starts with your story. Do cats rule the world? Does the water goddess say who lives or dies? Do people worship mops? I don't know what it looks like, but what I'm saying is really think outside of what you know or change how things work to fit that world and maybe something different from a different perspective. So I want to use one piece 
as a world building example because I know a lot of people know it does a lot of things right when it comes to world building. A small thing, something that's inconsequential is how do you communicate in a non-technological age? And there are two methods that they use inside of One Piece and that is the snail phone and even a bit more detail on that idea is that the snail phone takes on the features of the person on the call. So if you check out a snail talking, you'll see that person's facial features inside of the eye. It's really it's really fascinating it's a small detail but there's also the money system there's the world government and there are way more things in that world but really twisting your world to your story and how you can be inventive with the things that function inside of it now here's another example which is a bit more on the societal side but it definitely falls in line with world building and that is in my hero academia we see Todoroki who is a result of his father and other people in that world who want to create higher quality and refined quirks to essentially make them more privileged with stronger quirks now we can see that through Todoroki how that societal effect can damage those involved from that type of thinking and there's more to that but there's just more of interesting things that you can add to your world in subtle ways looking at how people might want to use their powers to gain more power and just thinking in that mind frame and I think those questions that I talked about earlier will really help bring out those story elements and help you world build even more deeply than you could have before but yeah make sure you know your story and really run with it think about the society think about the environment like the land the sea the sky think about the politics in some instances you'll see it'll really help you come to these from a different angle that you want to change your story and remember those questions down below in the link are free and will definitely get those ideas flowing don't limit to yourself to what you know go beyond push your limits plus ultra I'm gonna look back on that part and it's gonna be really cringe but I got really wrapped up in the hero binge after my hero that that music really hits right right now what you know about the world that you live in will help you create your own however to make that world really full one source of information will only make it flat and we all know that the world isn't flat right to make that world feel full what we want to do is research now researching I feel can go through two modes of finding out how you want your world to be there's researching your inspirations and then there's researching cultures and history both I think are needed to create something that is totally unique when researching your inspirations, you're basically looking at parts of world building that are like in other shows, like the snail that I mentioned above. How can you create unique communication systems that work for your story? That said, let's bring back that idea of organizing and making a list about what works in the worlds, in the stories that you like and how that relates to the stories that they're in. Another good idea is really thinking about why this works so you have a better understanding of what you like about this in that world element that you chose. Because understanding the why and the how it works is very important in how you can also implement that into your own story. Always add Ask why this works what do I like about this and what does this do to enhance the story that I'm looking at I think it's a good idea sometimes to use this in our own stories but now let's take a look further and let's look at actual cultures I just want to impress upon you questioning yourself and being critical of your own stories or the things that you like will help you better understand it and it's kind of like when you're in school and you have to read back to the teacher what you understood about why you like something or what you understood about the story it'll give you a better idea of what you actually grasped and you can better use that in your own story okay now let's get back to the actual cultures so now when looking at different cultures looking at customs and how their history has been can be very insightful for you and you might want to base aspects of that into your own story now you want to put your own twist on it and make it different but it can help inform your world using an actual culture has the benefit of grounding your story in a culture and learning about them and talking about how they were 
part of your inspiration and how you allowed people to take a brief look into them because they were part of how you actually created this part of your story. Studying culture and how they form, what they do, you can see some commonalities and things they do differently and understand the cause of what made some things happen. There's a lot of things you can look at when looking at cultures and you can take from them. So it's just good to look at some and maybe base some of your ideas on them because many great stories have come from that and yours will too. So even for example, I used a culture in my story note, which you can check out right here. I've put it on webtoons. You can definitely check that out. Please check it out. The culture that I used inside of the story was about the South African people and their colonization of their land by the Dutch people. There was a whole lot more in that, but it was more heavily inputted into that history of what happened. But I look to that point to show how that affected society and turned that people into servants to pay a heavy tax to those who are colonized by the Dutch. However, that may not have been known to a lot of people, so explanations like that are great when explaining parts of your world and how they came about. Research comes in many various ways, but taking inspirations from different worlds and adding them to your ideas of the perception of the world will create something brand new. Try your best to be original. I want to be in a new world, something I've never seen before, not in just Naruto Z. Make something new and everyone will want to be part of that world too. Okay, so for this last tip, it's really unique to the medium that we worked in and I touched on it a little bit earlier and that is manga is visual and we need to use that. A lot of the ideas that we've gone through, you probably have imagined in your mind about your world and that's great. I think using a lot of these tools here will help. For example, creating maybe a Pinterest of buildings and world elements that you would like to have inside of your own world or ones that you like from stories that you've already read or consumed. It'll help as you reference them inside of your own story. Next, create sheets for your buildings like we talked about earlier in the notebook.ai type organization section. How do your buildings look? How do your cultural clothing look? How do monuments look? How do elements like water, fire, air look and so on? Whatever it is that's important to your story, put it on that sheet. It may not need to be all on one sheet, but put it on different sheets as they correlate to the world building elements inside of your story. And you know, put a little explanation behind what is, why it is, how it happened. Notes are very important inside of your visual sheets. The reason this is important is because you wanna have consistency in your world visually, or at least something that makes sense to the cultures and people of the place and the time and makes sense on how you have actually created it and a little bit behind your process. Everyone loves hearing how you made something because once you put a lot of thought into something, someone's gonna wanna know how you did that. This part here about really making these sheets and everything is where you put everything together. So really push all that pre-production work that you've done up to this point and really visualize your world. If you don't have all the time for that, that's fine, but keep that in mind as you go forward. Keep things consistent. Okay, so with that last point, I think I've got all of my ideas on world building that can help you right now. So I think it's gonna really help you in creating a solid world that'll only grow with time. Definitely make sure you research, take inspiration from everywhere, and put yourself in it. Put yourself in that world, and it'll be something that everyone wants to travel to, a world that everyone wants to be in. Be organized. Don't get stuck in world building too long. Please don't get stuck there too long. And also, don't forget about the characters. They should be just as good as your world, if not better, because I always put characters first. But, you know, people will tell you different. Don't listen to them. So I know there's a possibility that I actually missed some details or I may have said some things wrong. So, you know, always correct me in the comment section down below. Let me know if it was helpful. Tell me of some other world building tips that you might want me to talk about or even any other story elements. I get them a lot from you guys. I appreciate all the comments. So please keep giving them. I love hearing them. So, you know, all that good stuff in the comment section down below. And yeah, that's about it. But that's all I have for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't or hitting that like button, clicking that bell for notifications when you want to hear things that I have to say. All right, y'all. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace. Get it? One piece? No? All right. Peace.
Bye.